1. The nurse administers an intradermal injection to a client. Proper technique has been used if the injection site demonstrates which of the following? A. Minimal leaking. B. No swelling. C. Tissue pallor. D. Evidence of a bleb or wheel. Correct answer is D. Evidence of a bleb or wheel. Rational. Colon A properly administered intradermal injection shows evidence of a bleb or wheel at the injection site. There should be no leaking of medication from the bleb, it needs to be absorbed into the tissue. Lack of swelling at the injection site means that the injection was given too deeply. The presence of tissue pallor does not indicate that the injection was given correctly. 2. Total parenteral nutrition, TPN, is prescribed for a client who has recently had recently had a significant small and large bowel resection and is currently not taking anything by mouth. The nurse should a. Administer TPN through an azogastric or gastrostomy tube. b. Handle TPN using strict aseptic technique. c. Auscultate for bowel sounds prior to administering TPN. d. Designate a peripheral intravenous for, site for TPN administration. Correct answer is bb. Handle TPN using strict aseptic technique. Rational, TPN is hypertonic, high calorie, high protein, intravenous, 4, fluid that should be provided to clients without functional gastrointestinal tract motility, to better meet their metabolic needs and to support optimal nutrition and healing. TPN is ordered once daily, based on the client's current electrolyte and fluid balance and must be handled with strict aseptic technique, because of its high glucose content, it is a perfect medium for bacterial growth. Also, because of the high donicity, TPN must be administered through a central venous access, not a peripheral four line. There is no specific need to auscultate for bowel sounds to determine whether TPN can safely be administered. 3. To prevent development of peripheral neuropathies associated with isoniazid administration, the nurse should teach the client to a. Avoid excessive sun exposure. b. Follow a low cholesterol diet. c. Obtain extra rest. d. Supplement the diet with pyridoxine, vitamin B6. Correct answer is d. Supplement the diet with pyridoxine, vitamin B6. Rational, isoniazid competes for the available vitamin B6 in the body and leaves the client at risk for developing neuropathies related to vitamin deficiency. Supplemental vitamin B6 is routinely prescribed to address this issue. Avoiding sun exposure is a preventive measure to lower the risk of skin cancer. Following a low cholesterol diet lowers the individual's risk of developing atherosclerotic plaque. Rest is important in maintaining homeostasis but has no real impact on neuropathies. 4. When giving an IM injection, the nurse should insert the needle into the muscle at an angle of A. 15 degrees B. 30 degrees circa 45 degrees D.90 degrees. Correct answer is D90 degrees. Rational, when giving an IM injection, the nurse inserts the needle into the muscle at a 90 degree angle, using a quick, dart like motion. A 15 degree angle is appropriate when ministering an intradermal injection. A 30 degree angle isn't used for any type of injection. The nurse may use a 45 or 90 degree angle when giving a subcutaneous injection. 5. A 56 year old client is receiving chemotherapy that has the potential to cause pulmonary toxicity. Which of the following symptoms indicates a toxic response to the chemotherapy? A. Decrease in appetite. B. Drowsiness. C. Spasms of the diaphragm. D. Cough and shortness of breath. Correct answer is D. Cough and shortness of breath. Rational, 
Cough and shortness of breath are significant symptoms because they may indicate decreasing pulmonary function secondary to drug toxicity. Decrease in appetite, difficulty in thinking clearly, and spasms of the diaphragm may occur as a result of chemotherapy, however, they are not indicative of pulmonary toxicity. 6. The client is receiving an IV infusion of 5% dextrose in normal saline running at 125 ml hour. When hanging a new bag of fluid, the nurse notes swelling and hardness at the infusion site. The nurse should first a. Discontinue the infusion. b. Apply a warm soak to the site. c. Stop the flow of solution temporarily. D. Irrigate the needle with normal saline. Correct answer is A. Discontinue the infusion. Rational, signs of infiltration include slowing of the infusion and swelling, pain, hardness, pallor, and coolness of the skin at the site. If these signs occur, the IV line should be discontinued and restarted at another infusion site. The new anatomic site, time, and type of cannula used should be documented. The nurse may apply a warm soak to the site, but only after the IV line is discontinued. Parenteral administration of fluids should not be stopped intermittently. Stopping the flow does not treat the problem, nor does it address the client's needs for fluid replacement. Infiltrated IV sites should not be irrigated, doing so will only cause more swelling and pain. 07. After undergoing small bowel resection, a client is prescribed metronidazole, flagyl 500 mg IV. The mixed IV solution contains 100 ml. The nurse is to administer the drug over 30 minutes. The drop factor of the available IV tubing is 15 GIT, ml. What is the drip rate in drops per minute? Record your answer using a whole number. Underscore drops, minute. Correct answer is 50. Rationale, the nurse should use the following equation to calculate the drip rate. Total quantity, administration time x gtt per minute equals x. 100 milliliters slash 30 minutes x 15 gtt per minute equals x. 1500 gtt. x equals 30 minutes. x equals 50 gtt minute. 08. A client receives a short-acting insulin and an intermediate-acting insulin before breakfast at 8 a.m. Using the chart below, when should the nurse expect the intermediate insulin to start to take effect? a. 3 p.m. b. 1 p.m. circuit 10 a.m. d. 9 a.m. Correct answer is c. 10 a.m. Rationale, the timing of insulin's effects varies according to the type. Referring to the chart, the nurse would note that the onset of action for the intermediate insulin is 2 to 4 hours. Because the administration time was 8 a.m. 0800, the effects should begin 2 hours after administration, at 10 a.m. a.m. A client has an IV line in place for 3 days and begins to complain of discomfort at the insertion side. Based on the client's progress notes below, what condition has most likely occurred? A. Infiltration B. Phlebitis C. Infection D. Infection and infiltration Correct answer is A. Infiltration Rationale the assessment findings of pallor, swelling, skin that's cool to the touch at the IV insertion site, and a normal white blood cell count all indicate infiltration. The infusion should be discontinued and restarted in a different site. Phlebitis would be evidenced by redness at the cannula tip and along the vein. Infection would be evidenced by an elevated white blood cell count. 10. When administering medication, the nurse ensures client safety by following the rights of medication administration. Identity the rights of medication administration. Select all that apply. A. Right room. B. Right client. C. Right dose. D. Right medication. E. 
Right time. F. Right root. Correct answer is B, C, D, E, F. Rationale. A nurse must always implement safe nursing practice when administering medications. Following the rights of medication administration helps protect the client from medication errors. Safe procedure includes confirming the right client, dose, medication, time, and route. Confirming the room number doesn't guarantee that the right client will receive the correct medication.